his word. Let's talk to him and tell him he is worthy. Our God, you are worthy this morning. You are worthy. Worthy to receive the power. Worthy to receive the glory, oh God. You are worthy this morning. Son of God, you are worthy. Holy Spirit of God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary to tell you that you are worthy, oh God. You are worthy, Son of God. You are worthy. You are worthy our life. You are worthy our praise. You are worthy our worship. You are worthy our service, oh God. You are worthy, mighty God. Hallelujah. We worship you. We give you praise, our God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your mighty visitation. My God, we can sense you right here. We can sense you. We can sense you in our midst, oh God. You have come down, oh God. We thank you. We give you praise. Take over. Take over in the sanctuary. Take over in our lives. Take over, oh God. You alone, you are worthy. You are worthy, Jehovah. Hallelujah. We thank you for the way that you have kept us. The way that you've been with us, oh God. In every step of our way, oh God, you've been there. And we just want to thank you to give you praise. Thank you for the opportunity to come to the sanctuary. Oh yes, to worship you and to give you praise. We thank you, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give our God a big hand. We tell him that he is worthy. He is worthy, worthy, worthy of our worship. Worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for coming down. Thank you for your mighty presence right here. We feel it. We see it. We sense it in every way. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Can we give me another hand? He is worthy. What a good God he is. He is a great God. He is a worthy God. He is a friend. He is our God. He is our everything. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them welcome to church today. Amen, amen, Mama Eden, amen. God bless you. We thank God, we thank God for who he is. He is a good God. Amen, amen. What a time to come back to the sanctuary and to have a time to worship the Lord. Amen, amen. Bona asifiwe. Habari zenu. Amen, amen, amen. It's a joy to be back, uh, to be back home. We truly, truly thank God for the successful visit we had in Kenya. You know, we, you know, we had a wonderful time with our family members. Uh, with the church over there and uh, what a joy to be back again amen amen the last few Sundays the church has been powerful you know powerful indeed watching online all the way from Kenya the church has been powerful and we thank God can we give God a praise amen 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 we thank God for our ministers our brother Joe you know our sister Faith you know our, our brother Chris thank you thank you and our powerful praise and worship let's give them a hand hallelujah 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 a lot of greetings from kenya you know our uh, family members and uh in the church in kenya they told us when you go to america just say hello to them amen and here we are we thank god amen he is a good god and uh and uh, before we go to the communion i just want to say uh paul Sana to our sister beatrice for the passing of the grandfather Paul Asana to our brother uh, Damazin for the passing of uh, his grandmother and Paul Asana to our sister Eva, you know, for the passing of the, of the grad, grandmother, right? Yes, yes, yes. We, we pray for uh, these, our friends, you know, uh, these, our family members. We pray for them that the Lord comfort them and see them through. Our sister Eva is in Kenya, you know, uh, for, the, for the burial. And uh, we pray for the entire families, all these families. Who are going through a hard time that the lord may comfort you and encourage you at this very hard time it seems like the time of our grandparents to go to be with the lord and uh, it is not easy for the flesh to part but we pray that the god of grace and the god of mercy you know the god of all comfort will comfort all of them in jesus name so you are we you are with us uh, we are praying for you and uh, we believe and we know that God will see you through in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I truly want to thank God for this time. Uh, today is communion. Tell your neighbor, today is communion Sunday. 
Amen. Thank you for all of you members. God bless you. God bless you. And our visitors today with us, I see my brother friend Kishuki and the daughter Jerry. God bless you. We love you. Good to see you. And by the way, you are, you, your mom said hello. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah, uh, so we truly, truly thank God for this time uh, uh, to, be, uh, to be here and to go through the communion. Uh, this is a very, very important time for us all, you know, uh, to come to the table of the Lord and uh, be reminded of the sacrifices of our God, what he did for us at Calvary. Amen. Uh, please give me those scriptures. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, so it is a wonderful time for us to be reminded the sacrifices of the Lord. Amen. What he did. Every time during our communion service, we are reminded you know what what jesus did you know the sacrifice he gave you know the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life you know uh, what a what a sacrifice that jehovah god gave his son and then the son gave his life amen that's a big sacrifice uh, they have given for us and we all know that all these was done for us well, you know, uh, the death of the cross, you know, the giving of the son, you know, was all for us. So uh, at communion uh, is a time to remember that. It's a time to, uh, uh, you know, to reflect back uh, to Calvary and see uh, uh, the sacrifice that our God has uh, given for us. Amen. So I'm, I'm talking to you today on a, on a subject, the important of uh, of communion and i want to speak to you from the book of first corinthians 11 and 23 all the way down to that three and we will see what god has for us amen uh, uh, right here in the book of corinthians apostle paul was uh, actually talking and uh, trying to put some things together uh, uh, to the corinthian church a church that well known as a carnal church and were very carnal indeed and so the apostle paul came to them and talked to them very seriously about the communion the importance of taking it seriously the importance of taking it very very seriously many a time they took it lightly you know and uh, it was bad for the church but now the apostle paul come back and talked to them and advised them how important it is to take the table of the lord or the communion seriously Amen. And the scriptures we're going to read today is all about that. Amen. So I want us to read all the way from, uh, from 23, all the way to that 3, and we see what God has for us. So uh, verses number 23 says, For I have received of the Lord that which also delivered unto me, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, let's go quickly, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, and said to them, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And we go to uh, 25. It says, After the same manner also the, he took the cup when he had served, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do also, and as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Verse 26 says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do it and sh show the Lord's death till he come. I don't like that. This version, the, the other version says, and, and, and proclaim the Lord's death until he come. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. 27 says, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup, of the Lord in an worthy manner will be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. It says, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. 29 says, for he who eats and drinks in an worthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. That is says, for this reason many are weak and seek among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we, we are chast chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. 
And the last one, therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. Amen. When you come together to eat, wait for one another. Amen. I want us to go to uh, 23 and verses number uh, that, 23 to 24. It says, therefore, my brethren, okay, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the same Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, broke it and said to them, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So when I read these scriptures, I see uh, many symbols of the communion. And uh, one of them is the one that we find over here in uh, verses number 24. And that is the bread. The bread. The bread is very, very important uh, in the communion. Very, very important. It's, it is an important symbol. And it symbolizes the body of Christ. The body of Christ. And Jesus told them, do this many times in remembrance of me. He took the bread and broke it. Gave thanks. And give to them and told them, do this many times in remembrance of me. You know, when we eat this bread, it's not the body of Christ. But it, it symbolizes the body of Christ. It should remind us of the body of Christ. You know, the body that was, that was bruised. The body that was tortured. The body that was beaten. The body that was whipped. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And chastised. He was chastised. He was bruised. He was beaten up. He was tortured on the cross. All for me and you. All for me and you. You know, many times we forget. And that's why we are told, you know, to do this many times. You know, Jesus told the disciples, do this many times. I don't want you to forget my sacrifice to you. I don't, want, I don't want you to forget me. I want you to remember the sacrifice that I have given for you. Do this many times in remembrance of me. So, my dear friends, on this communion Sunday, right on this day, May we be reminded of the Lord. You know, as we eat the bread today, which is a symbol of the body of Christ, may we be reminded the sacrifice that he gave. You know, the torture that he went through. You know, the beatings that he went through. The bruising that he went through. All for me and for you. We better not forget. Many times we do. But God does not want us to forget. You want us to remember all the time. My dear friends, may we remember the sacrifice of the Lord. So on this communion Sunday, may we see the love of God towards us. The love of God. That God himself could not withhold his son. He could not withhold his son. The word of God says, freely he gave. His only son. You know, and then the son freely gave his life. Out of love for you. Never forget one time. Never forget. You know many times we can forget. Never forget that God. You know. Never forget that God loves you. Always remember that God loves you. When you wake up in the morning. Be reminded that God loves you. In the noon time. In the evening time. All the time. Remember. Be reminded that God loves you. Therefore, on this communion Sunday, we are reminded of the love of God. Hallelujah. We are reminded that he loves us. We are reminded that he cares for us. Amen. We are reminded that God will not withhold anything for us. If he could give his son, God cannot withhold anything for us. God cannot withhold anything for us. He will give whatever he can give for us. We are his children. He is a father, and as a father, a caring father, and a laughing father. Sometimes we think that, you know, uh, there's a deception that God does not care. And especially when we go through hard times, when death comes, 
And you ask yourself, why? Why me? Why my family? You know, when pain come, you know, needs of this life come, we may think that God does not love. But my dear friends, on this communion Sunday, let us be reminded that God loves us and he cares for us. So, the, the bread should remind you of the body of Christ and, and should remind you of the, of, 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 the, of the torture and the pains that he went through. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The, the chastisement, you know, the ch chastisement, you know, was upon him. The chastisement of our peace upon him. And the Bible says, by his stripes, then we are healed. That's the word of God. By his stripes, we are healed. So all the torture and all the pain and all the bruisings, you know, and all the beatings, you know, the, that nine stripes the, the word of God talks about, you know, was for our healing. Amen. That means today you can go to him yeah, for your healing. For the healing of your family members. For, for, your, for the healing of your friends. For those who are sick. For yourself. You can go before the Lord for yourself. And tell him, God, here I am. By your stripes, I am healed. I believe it, God. I receive it, God. By faith, I receive healing. So, my dear friends, on this communion Sunday, may we be reminded as we eat that body, you know, as we eat that bread, let us be reminded we are eating the body of the Lord. Yeah, Jesus told his disciples, eat my flesh and drink my, my, my blood. Eat my flesh and drink of my blood. They did not get it. Eat it and drink. When we, when we drink, you know, when we drink the wine or the fruit of the vine, let us be reminded it's, talks about, it's talking about, is another symbol, is another symbol talking to us about the blood of Christ. You know, the blood of, you know, the, you know, the wine, the cup. In the same manner, the word of God says, uh, 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 he took the cup, gave thanks, and told them, drink this cup many times in remembrance of me. Drink it many times in remembrance of me. So as we drink the cup, today in this communion service, let us be reminded, be reminded, be reminded of the blood of christ that was shed at calvary the blood that was shed the bible says is a is, it is a it is a is a holy blood is a powerful blood that is the blood that washes our sins away it is the blood that reconciles us back to god we are reconciled back to god because of the blood because of the blood of jesus that blood that blood is available for each one of us. On this day, the blood of Jesus is available for us. The blood of Jesus cleanses our sins. You know, that means today you come to, to, uh, to the service, you come to church, and you say, wow, I feel unworthy to eat the communion. But my dear friend, when you know the blood and when you receive the blood, you should feel worthy of eating the communion. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses us. I always say that no one has a reason of not eating uh, the bread and drinking the cup. Enjoying the communion. Because during communion time, that is a time we need to, uh, to reflect back. You know, reflect back. Repent of every sin. Repent of every doubt. Repent it. And tell God, God, here I am. I always say there is no angel everywhere. There is no angel. We all fail many times. Even as I stand here, I, there are many times I feel God. No one is an angel. And as I come here even to minister, you know, I go before God and I tell God, God, as I stand there, I want you to help me. Because I'm not an angel, God. You know, I have failed you many times. I feel God. The sins of omission and the sins of commission. And therefore, as I come to the altar, I tell God, God, even before I get there to minister, I want you to forgive me, God. I want you to forgive me. Therefore, none, none one of us can stay away. You should not stay away unless you are, you, are, you are not willing to let it go. We should let it go. 
So remember the, the blood of Christ. The blood that was shed at Calvary is a powerful blood. The singer sang a song and said, there is power in the blood. There is a healing power. There is a reviving power. There is a superpower. There is a miracle working power in the blood of Jesus. This blood is available. It's available for you anytime. So on this communion, this is a wonderful time to reflect back and to go back to Calvary and tell God by faith, I receive your blood. I receive your blood, O oh God. That cleansing blood, that powerful blood, that healing blood, I receive it upon myself, upon my families, upon my children, upon our, my, you know, our spouses. God, I receive it. You receive that blood. Receive that blood. We live in a, a perilous time. Tough times. When we all need the blood, when we rise up in the morning and you go out there, you don't know what you're going to encounter. You need the blood. That's why it is important we plead this blood. It is a, a protecting blood. So on this, our communion Sunday, may, be, may we be reminded of the power and the availability of the blood of Jesus. It is available. That blood is available. That blood is available. Available for you, available for your family members. Available is a powerful blood. Hallelujah. Is available. Amen. And God told the Israelites, apply the blood on your doorpost. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When the angel of death come to destroy the, the firstborns of the Egyptians. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. My dear friends, I hear many people say, I don't know how to pray. But all you need to, all you need when you go before God is to tell God, God, I cover myself with the blood of your son Jesus. God, I cover myself and I cover my children and I cover my family members and I cover my friends with the blood of Jesus. We receive it by faith. This blood is powerful and this blood works. Amen. We need the blood. Amen. We can't do without the blood. So my dear friends, on this Holy Communion Sunday, let us be reminded that there is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. So this should act as a medium to remind you of the power of Jesus. The cup itself is not, is not the blood. The cup is is a symbol symbolizing the the blood of Christ. So it should remind you there is there is blood available. The blood that was shed at Calvary, you know, is symbolized in in the cup. So as we eat this, as we eat the bread and as we drink the cup, we don't just drink it, but we drink it in faith, believing that. You know, the blood of Christ that was shed, you know, represented by this cup, you know, knowing that it is available for us all. So, my dear friends, on this, on this, on this Sunday, communion Sunday, let us be reminded of the blood. Let us be reminded of the body that was bruised, beaten up for us. Another thing we realize in verses number 26, I want us to read this scripture before we go to the communion. Verse 26 says, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. In this scripture, I see uh, some assurances given to us. And the assurance is, Jesus truly died. Amen. Jesus truly died. Jesus truly died. Yeah. Proclaim the Lord's death till he come. Jesus truly died. It's not a myth. He truly died. Jesus did not hibernate and went somewhere. Jesus did not just went into a deep sleep. But Jesus truly died and was buried. And the Bible says on the third day, he arose. He rose again. He rose again. So on this communion Sunday, let us uh, be given that assurance that Jesus died. He died and he rose again. You know? He died and he rose again. 
It's not a myth. It's a fact. And he died for you and I. Amen. He died for you and I. Do this many times in remembrance of me. So let us remember the death of Christ. The death of Christ. Let us come to that fact that he truly died. Jesus died. We believe in the death. We believe in the resurrection of the Lord. We believe. Amen. Another uh, assurance I see is, is coming from the, uh, uh, that, should be, that should be 27. Verses number, okay. 20, proclaim the Lord's death. Actually 26 right there. Proclaims the Lord's death till he come. Another fact we see here is that Jesus is truly coming back. He is truly coming back. Proclaim the Lord's death till he come. That means he died. He truly died. And he was buried, and he rose again, and went back to the Father, and he is coming again. He is coming again. I, am, I stand here today by the grace of God to tell you that Jesus is coming again. He is coming again. I believe in the second coming of the Lord. I know he is coming to take us home. I, I, I know. I know he is coming. He is coming. And the signs we see everywhere should, uh, should actually bring us to, to that point of knowing that truly the coming of the Lord is not far off. Yes, it draws nigh and nigh as time goes by. So on this communion Sunday, remember that, that he died and that he's coming again. Jesus, the son of God, is coming again. And every eye, the Bible says, you see him. Including those who pierced him on the tree. They will see him come. With the crowd of heaven. They will see the Lord come. He is coming. Let us be reminded that he is coming. Let us not forget the fact that he is coming. He is coming. He is coming. When as believers and as children of God. When we are reminded that he is coming. Then what are we supposed to do? Then we, we stay ready for him. We stay ready for him. And that's why John said, Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. He was ready. I don't know who is ready for the coming of the Lord. I don't know who is ready. I don't know who is ready. But John said, Even so, Lord Jesus, come and don't delay. Come quickly. Are you ready for him? John was ready when he uttered these words. But are we ready? The word of God challenges us to be ready all the time. Be ready for the coming of the Lord. So on this communion Sunday and on this communion service, may we be reminded that he is coming again. May we be reminded to be ready for him. To be ready for the coming of the Lord. Let, let us be ready. Let, let us be prepared. He can come anytime. No one knows tomorrow. No one knows tomorrow. Jesus is coming. And he's coming quickly. Let us be prepared for his coming. Amen. Another fact I see over here is found uh, in verses number 27. Now, now we can read 27. It says, Therefore, whoever eat this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord. Whoever eat this bread and drink this cup in unworthy manner will be guilty of the Lord. Will be guilty. Whoever it is unworthy. Unworthy here means unworthy. You come to the table, you come to the table, and you know there are things, you know, uh, maybe uh, conflicts within, within uh, in your hearts or conflicts in your relationships, and forgiveness within, and you are not ready to let it go. You, you are not ready to tell God, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me, oh God. You know, if you are not ready to tell God to cleanse you and receive that cleansing by faith, and then you come to the table, then you are doing it in unworthy manner. And many of the Corinthians, actually, we are eating the table of the Lord in unworthy manner. Uh, having conflicts amongst themselves, you know, and forgiveness amongst themselves, you know. Without preparing themselves, you know, coming just to the table and just eating it like food, just like that. So Apostle Paul spoke to them 
and told them, anyone who eats in unworthy manner without discerning the body of the Lord is guilty. So my dear friends, on this uh, uh, communion service, okay, how did you come to church? How was your week? Is there any conflict with anyone? Is there, are there any fights, you know, to, with your friends? Unforgiveness, hatred, you know, hating other people with no reason. Is there something? That's why the word of God tells us now to examine ourselves. Let, it, it says, and I believe verses 28 over there, let a man examine himself. We examine ourselves. We examine ourselves. We are not angels. We fail many times. But now God tells us, examine yourselves. Examine. Examine. So we examine us. How is my heart? How is my walk with my brothers and my sisters? How is it? How is it? Do I forgive? Do I forgive? Am I always in conflict with others? You know, uh, let a man examine himself. So today on this communion Sunday, may we be reminded to examine ourselves. Is there unforgiveness? Is there hate? You know, you hate people for no reason. You know, there are people who there are people who will hate you for no reason. You know, they will hate you for no reason. They will insult you. They will fight you. You know, for no reason. Are there? Is is there something like that? Uh, unresolved conflicts. Do we have unresolved conflicts in our hearts? Is there a, a conflict that is unresolved? You know, at times we enter into conflict. Like it or not, we'll enter there. But when, when we get into conflict, are we ready? Are we ready to come to the Lord and tell God, God, here I am. I forgive them. I forgive them. You know, forgiveness is important. Forgiving others, important. And, I, and one thing I'll tell you is that our God is a God of relationships. God like it when we, his children, walk hand in hand with one another. We're walking hand in, hand in hand with one another. When we love one another. When I see when I tell you, oh, Joe, I have missed you. I have missed you, brother. You know, I have missed you. You know, from, from the depth of my heart, I have missed you. And I, when I tell you, I love you. I truly love you. I truly love you. Not loving with the lips, but loving with the heart. God wants us to get to that point where we appreciate one another. Don't disregard others. That is unworthy, you know, coming before the Lord. So, so uh, 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 Apostle Paul told them, he who eat this, uh, the, you know, this bread in unworthy manner. You don't disregard others. You disrespect them. You hate them for no reason. And you are doing it in unworthy manner. And when you examine yourself and know you are like that, now come before God and tell God, God, forgive me. Forgive me. I forgive my brothers. I forgive my sisters. I forgive my offenders. God, I forgive them. As you have forgiven me, God, I forgive, I forgive them. We forgive one another. We forgive one another. And it is so important in the eyes of God. Actually, by the way, the scripture says, if you come to the, to the, to the service and you come to the altar and you are giving your offering over there and you are reminded of your brother and your sister a conflict or unforgiveness, the word of God tells you to go back to them. Go back, leave your, leave your gift over here. And then go back and reconcile with them. That is the word of God. And I believe this word of God is talking to all of us as a people. All of us as believers. You know, if we are in, in a conflict, you know one of the things that the enemy uses uh, in the house of God or in the body of Christ is conflict. He come and, and cause us into rogger heads with one another into fights for and, 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 and you know for, for no reasons so on this day and by the grace of god you know as you come to the table of the lord is there any conflict any 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 i believe none but if there's any let us now go before god and tell god god uh, forgive me god forgive me any conflict between you and your children Parents, here we are. Sometimes we get into conflict, into longer heads, into longer heads with, your, with our children. You know, so, sometimes you feel if you could get them and chew them, you could. And that uh, sometimes they feel the same. But to the mothers and the to the mothers, the fathers and the children, all of us together, let us forgive one another. 
Let us forgive one another. As we come to the table of the Lord, let us forgive one another. So let a man examine himself. We examine ourselves as we get ready for the communion. We examine ourselves. Examine yourself. Is there a conflict with a friend? Then tell God, God, forgive me. Forgive me. Oh God. And in verses number 33, it says, let's have verses number 33. First, first that it says, where for my brethren, when you come together to eat, tally one another. My version says, wait for one another. Another version says, serve one another. And I love that one, actually. Serve one another. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat the bread and, and drink the cup, wait for one another. Serve one another. My dear friends, I start here to tell you that God wants us to serve one another. He wants us to serve one another. God wants us to serve one another. And by the way, this, uh, the, this word serve is a weighty word. It's a heavy word. Serve one another. It's weighty. It's heavy. It's heavy. Heavy. Because how can you serve and you don't love? How can you serve God and you don't love God? So it's a big word. It carries love. It carries forgiveness. It carries, it carries, it has a lot of meanings. Yeah, so uh, wait for one another. Serve one another. God wants us to serve one another. He wants us to love one another. He wants us to, you know, uh, uh, to be kind to one another. He wants us to help one another. He wants us to support one another. He wants us to bear one another. That is our God. And he's a father. And just like many of you are fathers and many of you are mothers, how does it feel when your children are waiting for one another? They wait for one another. When they love one another, how does it feel? You feel good when your children love one another. When they wait for one another, when they serve one another, they, they are encouraging one another. You know, as a, as a children of God, when I see my children like that, serving one another, loving one another, encouraging one another, supporting one another, holding each other's hand, as a father, I feel good. And I say, God bless them. I say, God bless them. And the same case with our Heavenly Father. When, he's, when he sees us serving one another, you, you come to church and you are, you are looking for every opportunity, every opportunity that you can to serve one another. You are looking for, God wants us to look for opportunities to serve one another. If there is a, something you can do for your brother and for your sister, if you can pray for them, pray for them. If you can give to them, give to them. If you can hold their hands, hold their hands. If you can walk with them, walk with them. Support to them, help them. You know, in this journey, because this journey, we need one another. It's not easy. It's not easy. And as a children of God, we need one another. So, uh, the scripture says, wait for one another. So, my dear friends, as we come to the communion on this day, may we be reminded of the, of the, of the bread of Christ. You know, the bread that we eat today symbolizes the, uh, the, 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 the body of Christ. The cup that we're going to drink today symbolizes the blood of Christ. Amen. And as we, we enjoy the meal of the Lord, you know, we are reminded that he truly died. And he is truly coming back again. He is truly coming back again. And as we wait for his return, let us serve one another. Let us love one another. Amen. We love one another. We serve one another. My dear friends, as I come to the end and as we get to the communion, serve one another. Serve one another. Eat the bread, drink the cup. Remember the sacrifice of the Lord. And as you eat and drink of the cup, remember he died for you. He died for you. He died for you. And that he's coming back again. And as you eat it, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. You know, when I come to church, I come to church and I go before God, God, I tell God, God, here I am. You know, as I go home, God, you know, cleanse me, cleanse me, God. 
The whole week, God, be with me. So, my dear friends, I want us to take a moment and I want us to take a time to examine ourselves and then we come to, uh, you know, uh, to the table of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's take a minute. Let's all stand up. Uh, I'll call upon our brother Chris and brother Joe. Uh, come over here. Yeah, we're going to hold the, you know, as we get ready. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We will take a time and go before the Lord. We will go before the Lord. We will go before the Lord and just thank God for who he is. Hallelujah. We just thank God for who he is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's, let's go before the Lord. Father, thank you. All of us, let's go before the Lord and just thank him for who he is. He is a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each one of us, we can talk to him. Let's open our hearts. Let's examine ourselves. Let, let, let us tell him to, to, cleanse, to cleanse us, to forgive us. God, we thank you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, our, our Father. Oh, this afternoon, we come before you, Lord. We come before you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We ask that you cleanse us, God. Cleanse us, oh God. Cleanse us, oh God. Cleanse us from every sin. Oh God, wash away our sins. Wash away. Cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us, oh God. We thank you. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary. Oh God, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. Oh God, we thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary, oh God. As we get ready to, uh, to eat the bread and drink the cup, oh God. We are reminded of, of your body, how much you were tortured, how much you were bruised, oh God. You were bruised for us, oh God. The sacrifice that you gave, God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. Search our hearts. Search our hearts. Help us to search our hearts. Help us to examine our hearts, oh God. If there is any unforgiveness, God. Oh, we forgive, we forgive, we pray that let there be forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Where there is hate in our heart, we pray let there be love, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, we give you praise. We thank you, God. Help every father and help every mother, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. My God, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you to know that there is power in the blood. There is power in the blood.